Hello! Now I have a new helmet to show you. You might look at the cover and think I've already seen this helmet, but I was actually just quickly trying the uh, Mark VI helmet cover I had for my Mark VII helmet to see if it would actually fit on the helmet. And it actually fits fairly well, although I might buy a specific cover for this helmet at some point. But this is the British version of a Pascot helmet, uh, so the M88 helmet. So let's get that off, and as you can see, this is a different helmet. It is not the Mark VII that I was showing before, however, both are fairly similar looking helmets. However, thanks to advice from Tumbo, I've bought this helmet, Tumbo1984, um, because he said these are much better than Mark VII helmets in terms of ballistic protection. Um, that basically the Mark VII isn't totally Kevlar inside. Uh, to cheapen the manufacturing of these, they put a bit of ballistic nylon in with the Kevlar, meaning it's not as good as a solid Kevlar helmet. So here we go, here's a solid Kevlar one. So, Basically, how I bought this is I bought this as an ex-firearms um, sort of police one because the uh, armed police in the UK have basically military-style gear, and what the helmets they use are M88 or Pascot helmets. Uh, it's a British copy of the Pascot helmet. I believe it has another name, so let's take it off and have a look at the liner. Um, the strap system isn't too uncomfortable. I definitely prefer the Mark VII strap system. The internal harness and everything's fine. It has one of these like weird popper buttons on there. So let's try and get this off. It's a bit awkward. It's one of those ones that's easy to button up, but then not to unbutton, there we go. So, let's get the helmet off. So, as you can see, this is the helmet. Now, this is definitely a real one, not one of the airsoft ones, because it feels really solid and it's got the proper labels in. So, here we go. Let's have a look at the thing. You might not be able to see that well on the uh, camera, so I'll just read it out to you. So, it says MLA. Model Commando S6, uh, sorry, SC650, size medium, lot number, protection level 3A, so that's Kevlar number 3A. Um, made in the UK, date of manufacturer January 06, so 2006. So obviously th what happens is with Kevlar stuff they retire it from use because, as I've explained before, Kevlar strictly has an expiry date on it, but it's one of those things after the expiry date there's not much that's really gone wrong with it. I think in theory the idea is that the fibres aren't as tightly held together so therefore it doesn't offer the original level of protection. Uh, there's lots of things where people have gone into depth looking into this. Generally the consensus is that Kevlar, although officially it expires, it doesn't really expire a bit like a lot of the gas masks. That as long as you keep it in good conditions, you don't get it wet, you know, you don't bash it about too much. Over time um, there's very little that's going to go wrong with the Kevlar. Yes, there are better materials now like thermoplastics for helmets, but Kevlar itself, you know, is good enough for what it is, and as I said, I've tested one of those old Kevlar vests by trying to get through it with loads of stuff, and it still holds up strong. So, the line is fairly comfortable, you've got a front foam pad and a rear foam pad, um, you've got like one of those mesh harnesses on there. It's not too dissimilar on the inside to the British military helmets, however, this is made to a higher standard, supposedly, because it's entirely Kevlar, not ballistic nylon and Kevlar, to make it cheaper to make. So, obviously... If anybody's familiar with the Pascot helmet, they'll basically know what this is. Now, I don't know if this is strictly the Pascot or the lightweight combat helmet, the one that the US replaced the Pascot with, and now that's getting replaced with the um, advanced combat helmet, or whatever it's called, or the enhanced combat helmet, which is the one that's made from the thermoplastics. But this is essentially the Kevlar one, and it's 3A. Now, like I said, I don't know if this is the original Pascot or the lightweight version of the Pascot, but either way, 3A level of protection, so it basically means... At close range it will stop most pistol rounds, unless it's a very high velocity sort of steel cord pistol round or whatever else. Uh, obviously it would stop buckshot, birdshot, stuff like that, 22 long rifle. Any sort of air rifle pellets would probably do give you quite good protection from crossbow bolts as well. Um, so these then, as I was saying, are the helmets the armed police use. Um, but the Pascot helmet is very famous because it's the one that in the 80s the Americans designed to be kind of a very modern infantry helmet that was far better than the old steel pot helmets. The issue was the British military, for whatever reason, didn't decide it was a good idea to adopt the clever helmet design the Americans were using, and that's why we had the Mark VI helmet, the Mark VIA, and now the Mark VII, and why I quite like the Mark VII, what Tumbo said is quite interesting, that it's still not to a standard that you'd expect. Um, so, obviously to put the helmet on, put it on like that, the straps here are adjustable, this one's in medium, um, fits me fairly well, but to be honest I've worn small and large helmets and not really had an issue with any of them. So what you then do is stretch this bit over to that, till the popper goes into that. So I don't know if it's gone in because it's not clicked there really. But... Yep, yeah, no, that's not on tight. 
I might have to loosen the straps a bit more. I've not fully figured out yet how I like the strap configuration on this, and it's another one of those helmets where you think the strap design would have been a bit better. There we go, that's clicked in. So then adjust it on your head to get it as comfortable as possible. And I've unclicked it by doing that. I'll probably loosen some of the straps at some point, but... I'm not sure if that's in well enough, but there you go, that's the helmet on with its little clip-on bit. I know some people do replace the straps on these helmets because they're not a massive fan of the strap system. Um, but, you know, the buttons on the Mark 7 and the Mark 6 helmet I'm not a massive fan of either because you have to stretch it to just the right amount to get the buttons to clip. Um, you know, the ones I like are the old buckle ones where you just put some sort of buckle together or a, like a belt loop and then you thread it through until you've got it the tightness you want. Um, but yeah, this doesn't come with this as standard, but some of these helmets might have different strap systems than others. Um, but yeah, overall, this seems quite alright. Like I said, I'm only buying it for the protection factor, that the fact it's a proper 3A helmet, as unfortunately it sounds like the Mark VII actually isn't. Um, but yeah, obviously the Pascot design is not really a new kind of design for lots of... Um, you know, people, it's been around, it's a tried and tested design that's known to have worked, it's only being replaced now really because there's slightly, you know, better uh, helmets for the same sort of size and shape, but it's not a heavy helmet, um, I've not actually weighed it, but, you know, it's maybe a kilo. I know the Mark 7, I think, is meant to be one kilo, so that weighs that. They're very similar in weight. I'd say maybe the Mark 7 is slightly heavier, I'm not really sure. Um, but my Mark 7 is in a large, and this is in a medium, so that might make the Mark 7 slightly heavier for that reason. But, yeah, overall, uh, quite impressed with this. Um, obviously, like I said, I'll have to get all the straps adjusted to how I want them and everything else, but this, you know, seems competent enough, and it's nice to actually finally have a proper Kevlar helmet that's, you know, up to standard or whatever else. Um, you know, as good a kind of level of protection as a civilian you can buy. Uh, so if something kicks off, and as long as it's not rifle bullets flying at you, the helmet should be able to uh, stop them, hopefully. But, you know, shotguns and pistol rounds, especially at distance, it would stop absolutely fine. Um, because these are based on, the obviously, the old Stauhelm design the Germans had in World War II, um, it's aesthetically a very nice-looking helmet. Um, the shape's good because, obviously, it's made to an actual shape that you'd expect a helmet to be, where, you know, better protection at the back and sides and then cut up a bit so you've got an eye line there. I'd say that's pretty good with me because, you know, it's what my eyebrows are pretty much at where the helmet ridge is. So, there you go. Um, I think that's, like I said, I think it was called the Commando Helmet. But yeah, the Armed Police Commando Helmet seems um, good enough and hopefully I'll never need it. But if I do, at least now I actually have a Kevlar helmet as opposed to, um, you know, a semi-Kevlar helmet, I guess, which the British military ones were beforehand.